This is Dan from MSS Enduralist. Welcome to the channel. I found this interesting video on how psychology is used to change our perceptions towards things. And I wanted to share it. Basically a PSYOP to control the masses. Check it out. The quest for power is the driving force of history. Always has been, always will be. Those who fail to recognize this principle are not spared in the grand chess game, but rather are moved and manipulated by forces that they do not understand. From the perspective of those who dominate the board, it is obviously preferable to have a population of ignorant pawns than it is to have an array of opponents which are capable of mounting an effective resistance. To that end, it has always been in the interest of the ruling class to cultivate illusions which obscure the true nature of the game. Manufacturing consent. What is that title meant to describe? Well, the title is actually borrowed from uh, a book by Walter Lippmann, written back uh, around 1921, in which he described what he called the manufacture of consent as a revolution in the practice of democracy. What it amounts to is a technique of control. Uh, and he said this was useful and necessary because uh, the common interests, the general concerns of all people, elude the public. Walter Lippmann wasn't speaking theoretically, nor was he commenting on a phenomenon that he had observed from a distance. He was part of that specialized class, and he personally influenced the development of this new technique, control. So what was this new technique that Lippmann was referring to? The answer to that question takes us back to the beginning of World War I. In 1917, Woodrow Wilson formed the Committee on Public Information, also known as the CPI. It was a propaganda agency, and its purpose was to build support for the war with the American people. The CPI, run by a man named George Creel, was known for its crude tactics, blatant exaggerations, and outright lies. However, one member of the CPI, Edward Bernays, had a much more subtle approach. Rather than resorting to lowbrow tactics, Bernays studied the mindset of the American people, and then based on his observations, he created a campaign to promote the idea that America's purpose in the war was to, quote, make the world safe for democracy. This meme was wildly successful, so much so that it continues to be used even to this day. Edward Bernays was Sigmund Freud's nephew, and like his uncle, he was an avid student of human psychology. Some documentarians, such as Adam Curtis in his film The Century of the Self, have mistakenly assumed that the psychological techniques that Bernays went on to develop were merely the practical application of Freud's theories. However, though Freud had a significant influence on his nephew, the reality of the matter is that he was not the source of these ideas. Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays, and Walter Lippmann all subscribed to a school of thought that was first put forth in 1895 by a French social psychologist named Gustave Le Bon. Le Bon wrote several books, the most famous of which was entitled Psychologie des Foules. It was translated into English as The Crowd, a study of the popular mind. The Crowd was a revolutionary piece of work. In it, Le Bon not only presented an in-depth description of group psychology and how it differed from individual psychology, but he also outlined a very simple set of principles that enable leaders to spark ideological contagion and thereby rise to power. Hitler, Goebbels, and Mussolini all studied Le Bon's writings, and they applied his techniques to the letter. The results that they attained were precisely those that Le Bon claimed that they would have. Funny how they leave that little detail out of most history books, don't you think? Sigmund Freud's book, Group Psychology and the Analysis of the Ego, was in fact a direct critique of the writings of Gustav Le Bon and William McDougall, which focused on the relationship between individual psychology and group psychology, and explained how human groups can be controlled for long periods of time through the manipulation of group identity, belief systems, and social structures. Edward Bernays studied the writings of Freud, Le Bon, Wilfred Trutter, Walter Lippmann, and many others. He then combined their perspectives and synthesized them into an applied science. The success of his Make the World Safe for Democracy meme during the war, both at home and abroad, planted the seed of an idea in Bernays' mind. Could group psychology tactics be applied during peacetime? When I came back to the United States, I decided that if you could use propaganda for war, 
you can certainly use it for peace. And propaganda got to be a bad word because of the Germans using it. So what I did was to try to find some other words. So we found the word Council on Public Relations. In 1919, Bernays opened the world's first public relations office. He named his agency the Council on Public Relations. It occurred to me that any young debutante who was aware of the times and of herself as a woman being discriminated against would be delighted to walk in the Easter parade with her bow uh, to dramatize the idea that cigarettes were indeed torches of freedom to, and to validate uh, and to invalidate the taboo against women smoking. So I called up a debutant friend of mine, asked her to get another friend and two young men whom they liked. And they, I also instructed them on how to give information about what they did to the newsreels, weekly newsreels, to the newspapers, to the three important press associations, the AP, the United Press and International News Service, and to walk from 34th Street to 57th and back and, back and forth lighting torches of freedom to protest man's inhumanity to women by a taboo against smoking. Next morning, there wasn't a newspaper in the United States. Even the New York Times had a front page story, debutantes light torches of freedom to protest man's inhumanity uh, to women by a taboo against smoking lighting cigarettes in their walk. The interesting thing to me was that within three days, the newspapers without any intercession on my part published accounts that women were smoking in Union Square in San Francisco, in Union Square in Denver, and on the Boston Commons. This was Bernays' specialty, engineering social trends for clients, and he was very, very good at it. Perception was now a commodity for sale of the highest bidder. This is part one of this video. I'm going to put it out, see how you guys like it, uh, check your comments below. And if you want to see more, I'll be more than happy to put the rest of it up. Until next time, this is Dan from MSS Enduralas. Until next time, take care of each other.